What up, fish people? Kenny E with Danica Aquatics. Well, guys, waking up this New Year's Eve to this. These guys keep trying to do eggs here. And just can't get anything to hatch, and pretty sure it's because of the tank mates. But as you can see by this tank, I would hate to get rid of all this moss and stuff and all this that has grown out very nicely. I've got three to four uh, stir by Coriadoras that are left over in here, and then one big uh, loach, yo-yo loach. So haven't had the time to get them out. These guys keep trying to breed, so I think what we're going to end up doing is snatching these guys up and getting them in their own tank here. This is your first time viewing my channel. These are my blue diamond discus. We got these from a local store here called The Wet Spot. I'm sure folks have heard of them. But these guys are absolutely stunning. My wife and I have raised these up from about three inches. Bought three of them. Uh, one's down in the 240 discus tank. These two paired off, so we put them in a tank of their own. And I thought the snails were causing the problem with the eggs, and I got a yo-yo loach in here to eat those, but again, the eggs still, I don't know if I've got a problem with my water. A few of my guys tell me that. However, I did see a discus farm in Florida there that raises their discus in a high pH, high hardness of water, so it's hard to say. I'll keep trying. Eventually, we do plan to put these guys in there, probably about a 30-gallon. Just haven't had time to set up new tanks, but we will we'll hear soon. So anyway, that's our 75-gallon discus tank. Now holds two discus, a yo-yo loach, and about four Coriadoras, and tons of snails still around. I'm wondering where my little loach is this morning. Usually he's up here greeting me. I wonder if I got a problem with him. Yeah, I don't know where he's at this morning, guys. It's unlike him not to be coming out and saying hello. Huh. Yeah, these guys are probably about a year and a half, two years old. The colors in them are just amazing. Love these guys. If you haven't kept discus, uh, they're not as hard as people think. Nowadays, most of the discus, especially out this way, seem to be a majority tank raised discus anyway, so they're not as fragile as they once were. Obviously, if you pick up wild ones, it would be a little more scary, but th these guys, like I said, they're pretty hardy. Just keep their water good and clean and give them a good diet. They seem to be very happy. These guys get uh, flake, some pellet, a little bit of brine, and an occasional blood worm or two. And as you can see, they're used to me. They always come up and say hello in the morning. I'm going to have to, when I get done with this video, though, try to figure out what, where my yo-yo loach went off to. He must be hanging down on these rocks. There's one of the little rogue stir by Corey. I've got the rest of the colony down in the 240, and these guys always seem to evade me. I have lured them out with uh, food and whatnot, and I can never seem to catch them. But as you can tell, I'm not real stressed about it. They like to hang in this rock. I'm pretty sure that's where that yo-yo loach is too. So, well, I'm in here. I'll show you the rest of what we got going on. This is what we call our green room. And if you're wondering why, it's because it's green. But a little bit of everything in here. I'll go through each tank with you guys. So next to the discus tank here, we have, this is my wife's little colony of cherry shrimps. This is a pretty good established colony. It's been up for almost a year and a half now. As you can see, they're reproducing very well. She's got some good bright red cherries in here. I 
And she's actually cold the bunch out and has a second tank downstairs with them now. I wouldn't even want to guess how many shrimp are in here, but I'm sure it's in the hundreds. She probably needs to cull some more out of here. But as you can see, she uses, uh, I can't remember if these are elder or oak leaves. Moss balls, and then she loves this guppy grass type stuff, or hornwort, whatever it is. I'm not sure what what it is she has in here. But as you can see, it's very happy, well-established shrimp tank. Then next to this is her little colony of lemon tetras and then she has martage tetras. A couple of three or four of the albino quarries. We got one super red bristle nose in here. He does a pretty good job keeping the algae at bay. And then she has a couple of female betas in here as well. That's a 20 high. She, the Martigés have bred once. Uh, she wasn't able to get them to go again. We gotta probably start thinking about really keeping these guys by themselves. And she's got one incredibly, I don't know how that endler ended up in here, but he's in here as well. The Martigés are really cool looking Tetra. I don't know if anybody's kept them out there, but we're pretty happy with those. And my wife does plan to breed these lemon Tetras again as well. And like I said, the Martigés bred about three or four months ago. My wife didn't notice it in time, and at the time we had an Episto in here, and he, he had himself a glorious day. We were able to save one. She's got one in here that's little misshaped but seems happy so she doesn't mess with them and this tank next to here is one of my grow out tanks that's mama there it's one of my dragon blood uh, looking at the eyes on this I would believe that my bright red non albino dragon blood is the one that mixed with this one These little guys will get lots of color by the time they're ready. Mama's gorgeous for a female. She's got quite a bit of red in her. And then down below here, I have some little yellow labs and then some more dragon bloods growing out. These guys are all just about getting to size where they'll be able to go down to the 135, and that's when they'll usually start really putting the size on as well as the color. I had one of my fish doors requested I start breeding the lemon yellows again so that's why I've got them again. It's funny how <clears throat> things go through streaks. But these guys again another month they'll be ready for market. They're fun to keep while you're waiting for them to go to market. Lots of personality. That's why my wife and I are having, we're setting up probably another 10 to 15, maybe even 20 more tanks this next week. So we're running out of grow out space again. And then these guys are my wife's pride and joy. We got these from the wet spot. Uh, the ones with the stripes are called the Aunt Chetra. And these are cherry, cherry tetras, I believe they're called, with the red fins. They're super rare. She had to have them. Do plan to pick her up some more of them when they're available. The ant tetras are super, super rare. That's that one right there with the stripe. So we got to wait for those to become available again.
then these little guys are Sorry guys, getting distracted looking for my other ant toucher there. I wonder where he's at this morning. There he is. You all know that feeling when you're looking at your tanks. You're always making sure everybody's there. But yeah, these guys are cool. My wife loves them. Then in the tank next to that, guys, is my... Wife's and I's Cryptochromus breeding colony. That's one of our males there. Super cool little fish. We love them. Then I did put some of our long fin albino plecos. Our good friend Derek gave these to us. And I tell you, these guys are cleaning machines. They get on this algae and they just are on it. These guys get a lot better color. I told my wife I want to change this substrate back to sand. So I don't think this substrate's doing these guys any justice. It's turning them real dark. But they usually get some nice yellowish and purples going through them. It's really a cool fish. I'll give you more updates as it goes. Um, then we'll keep an eye on them. I think we have one female in here that may be ready to go. Anyway, that's that. And then the tank next to it, you've all seen this. I think I did a video a couple weeks ago on this one. This is our little breeding colony of uh, Super red albino, excuse me, super red bristle nose. I think we're up to three batches now in here. We do have these cute little guys that were born the last couple of days. And but the ones that were born like a month ago, as you can see, they're starting to really get their colors in now. Just absolutely stunning. And we've got quite a few of these little guys now. Then the second batch was even bigger. But super, super cool. And then underneath that, guys, we have our what's left of the green tears. If you are in the Portland area and need a green tear, give me a call or leave a comment. I have about 50 to 60 of these guys left. I do want to see them gone. Uh, I need the tank space. But they're cool little fish, very personable. I got these from a lady by the name of Susan, and I promised her I wouldn't let anybody feed them to their pets or anything of that nature, and I've kept my word. Still looking for homes for them, though, so if you or you know of anybody, share this video to them. Get a hold of me. I have plenty of them. And last but not least, this is our last remaining little pea puffer. We're not sure what happened. We had two females in with them, and then one day they were gone. So we're not 100% not sure what happened, but we are going to get them some more buddies here. I don't believe he killed her, but he might have. These guys can be pretty feisty. Well, that is our little pea puffer setup. Plenty of plant and whatnot. And as you can see, the graveyard of snails. If you guys haven't kept them, I recommend them. They're very personable. Come right up to you every time you're out and about. I call this guy Pee Wee. He was always the smallest one, and he's the one that survived them all. We had four to start with, and uh, like I said, there's no rhyme or reason. One, minute, one day they're gone, and I'm, I still don't know, unless he ate them. Because we, had, whatever snails are in this tank are dead, so there's no way they ate them. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'll keep this short. I shouldn't say short, it's almost 15 minutes, but wanted to give you a view of the green room while I was in here. 
the disc is bred, and then I figured I'd give you a tour of the rest. Hope everybody have a glorious New Year's Eve, and uh, if you're going to party, be sure to get a designated driver, guys. It's not worth it. As always, love your fish. This is Kenny E. with Danikin Aquatics, checking out for now. Y'all have a great day.